USAopoly brings us Lifted. It's a whole crane full of fun. Oh, come on now. Come on. Oh! No! No! Hey, how's it going? This is the McGuire Review, and today we're going to be taking a look at Lift It from USAopoly. You know, we've had this game for a little while now, and uh, we've played it quite a bit. And I have to say, this is a fairly underrated game, in my opinion. Um, I think it, they did a great job with it. It's a very innovative game, and it's a lot of fun. So let's look at the details here. Eight plus on this one, so you can uh, really use this with the younger crowd. One to eight players in 30 minutes. One thing that is really cool about this is that you can solo this game, uh, and you, you kind of go for you know how many, how many of these uh, setups you can complete um, in a certain, you know, amount of time around the board. The premise of the game is you're basically going to be taking these, you know, these objects that you see here on the box, and you're going to be either, you know, by holding this little crane object, we'll get it out here in a second, you're going to be moving these objects around and trying to kind of stack them up, you know, into different configurations. And depending on where you land on the board, you may even have to do that with your head. So it's a really, really cool concept, and it's a lot of fun. So let's get it out of the box. They include uh, just a small pamphlet here, kind of about some of their other games. Uh, you've got a rule book. It is uh, full, you know, visual, color, and that's it. Just uh, one, two, three pages. So it's a very, very short little rule book. It's got a few uh, extra things on the back. There's some gameplay variations. You can do two players into one team. So you can do two on two, which is a really fun setup. You can do individual play. And I'll just read this really quick. Your goal in individual play is to reach the finished space with maximum six building cards. Treat all spaces as standard spaces. So essentially what you're going to try to do when you're playing solo is you're going to try to get to the finish line, and we'll show that here on the board what that is, within six of the building cards, which essentially means that you're going to have to get um, full points on those six cards, or pretty close to full points to be able to make it within those six cards. So that's how solo play will work. And if you want to enhance your gameplay, they do include an app on the App Store as well as the Google Play Store that will add a timer. There is a timer that's included in the box, but you can download that app if you want to. If we look at the board. Let's try that again. So let's get our board out here. If we look at the board, we've got our classic four panel layout. And you'll see the board here has the spaces around the outside and then there's two areas on the board there you'll see at the top at the bottom where the players are going to use to build the you know the structures that are indicated on the card when it's your turn and then you'll also see they'll kind of lay out on the board the other areas where the pieces sit so everything's nice and organized on the board we'll move this over here get our board out for us so the first thing we'll pull out here is the cards in the game, and there's going to be quite a few they're going to give you, and we'll take a look at a few of those. And what they're going to be is they're going to indicate the structure that needs to be built. Now what you'll find here on the bottom is it will give a time, and it gives a little symbol to show you with the timer that's included how many of those you need. And what that means is the maximum time on this timer is 40 seconds. So once it's full and you flip it over, you've got 40 seconds of time. So if it shows just one of them, that's going to be the 40 seconds, which would indicate right there. Well, some of them might say 80 seconds or 120 seconds. What you'll have to do then is it will show you there's one, two, three. What that means is once it runs out, you grab it, you flip it over, you let it go another 40, you grab it, you flip it over, you let it go another 40. And, you know, someone will have to kind of keep that time and add that up as the other players or the other team is trying to, you know, build their structure. That's how the timer works, and that's how the cards will indicate that time for you. And that is the only thing that you'll find on these cards. You'll find what you need to build, the amount of time, and it will indicate how many times that timer should be flipped. And each one of the cards look like that. Here's a really, uh, here's quite a hard one here, 120 seconds, and you'll see how intricate that one is, you'll need quite a few pieces all stacked up. And you may think, okay, you know, how hard really is this? I mean, I grab a piece, I lay it down. Well, we'll show you here, I'll do a little gameplay, both with my hand and with my head. Uh, and it is a little, it is quite difficult to do. Um, some of them are easy, you know, the ones that are for 40 seconds that might have, you know, three, three objects you have to stack together. 
Uh, even those can be challenging in some situations, but uh, most of them are fairly difficult and it is a real rush to be able to get it done within the allotted time. And that's really kind of what the nail biter of this game is. So you got one, you know, party kind of watching and waiting or all the other players and you got someone trying to complete this thing and, you know, they're working as fast as they can and beads of sweat are coming off of their head. Beads of sweat are coming off of their head. Beads of sweat are coming off of their head. As, this, as the time is running out, let's get in and look at some of our um, objects that we have here. And they are just all, uh, you know, they're made out of plastic. And you'll put each one of those on the indicated space that it shows on the board. So you'll load the board up with these with these objects here and you'll just put them out. Just like this. Come on, get over there. Okay, so that's all the objects that go on the board. And then what we're gonna have is our little cranes. And the game does include four of them. So we'll get those out. And then you will have your four pawns for your players. Now how it's gonna work here is essentially to win the game you're going to start on these spaces right down here. And you're gonna put these on the corners. Let's say we're doing um, a, a team-based game, but every player is kind of taking their turn. So we'll use all four pawns. And essentially what you need to do is get uh, your pawns around to this side and respectively these around to here. So you don't have to go all the way around the board. You only have to go uh, ha essentially half of the board. So just go a run and a run. And if you can get your pawn there, then you would be a winner uh, by getting your pawn to that other side of the board on the other space. You're gonna take your cards, you're gonna put those right in the spot indicated. And the only other thing you're gonna have here is there's gonna be four other cards that are gonna be included. And those are gonna correlate to each one of the colors of the game, yellow, blue, green, and red. And what these are called are challenge cards. So on the board, you'll see these little spots here that have like a, almost a candy cane looking bar. Whenever you cross one of those spots, it means upon your next turn, you will have to do a head-to-head -head challenge. Now that's a little bit different than what you would normally have to do. Uh, you'll see that there's a few different spots on this board. There are just the blue or the red, kind of the pinkish. If it's a, just a standard colored spot, when you land on that spot, you just would draw a card normally. If you land on a spot that has a little person with the crane kind of off their head, you need to do that challenge by use of the included headbands. So you'll strap one of these headbands on your head, and the crane actually has a little slot here that will attach, and it will kind of hang off of your head like this, and you'll be picking up these pieces and trying to build you know, the whatever is indicated on this card by that. You can't use your hands at all. So that gets really difficult. And then another spot here uh, has like a, almost like a little uh, voice bubble. And if you land on that one, what happens is the next time it's your turn, you're not actually allowed to see the card. Your partner or whoever else is playing, let's say it's a four player game, would draw that card and they would explain it to you. And then you would build it based on their instructions. So you can't see actually what is on the card. And that is a whole other level of difficulty uh, when you're doing something like that. Uh, and you, you know, you need to play fair. You need to try to explain it the best that you can as someone's building that. You know, you can't, there's no, you can't try to trick them as they're trying to build it or that really wouldn't be very fair. So, uh, but that is another mechanic in this game. And I do like that mechanic. It does get really difficult. Sometimes it's a little bit frustrating when you're trying to build it and you're like, okay, how does this go? And because it's difficult enough to be able to just get the blocks in the proper order to complete what's on the card, much less not being able to actually see the card and have someone just explaining it to you. So that's what our challenge cards are gonna be used for. And I'll go ahead and get the headbands out. And the last thing we've got is there will be included these little, um, these little, I like to call them little connect on crane hooks. Uh, essentially that won't be what you'll use. You'll take that and you will hook it to this and there's a couple different ways to hook it on so i guess you can kind of decide which way works best for you you can hook it to where the hook is forward you can hook it to where the hook is kind of you know facing you maybe you like to kind of hook it this way or that way you can actually hook it on the front and the back to give it a little bit of an angle so you can kind of choose how you want to attach this hook uh, to this piece and you know i found it, it, for me it doesn't really add a lot of different variation but when you get um, very precise the more you play this game and you can set some rules before you start off to how precise you want things 
um, it, it may make a difference with that getting it just right and and it, I think it's kind of a personal preference so it does give you that option of a few different ways to kind of hook to the crane to be able to pick it up and you can see now generally when it's your turn you're gonna be grabbing these pieces and let's say you gotta grab this one you're gonna pick it up and you gotta you gotta pull it over and and remember the whole time you're being timed so you're kinda you're kinda trying to move as fast as you can you're watching the clock and let's say you gotta stack this green one on top of this yellow one and oh yeah that's not happening. Okay, now it's rolling off the table. Oh! Got it back on the table. Now we grab the green one again. Oh, let's come on now. Get it in there. All right. Now we get it up. And... Okay. All right, got it. And let's say then we had to put the red one on top of that. Let's grab this. Red ball. Let's say... Okay, there we go. All right, so let's say that's one of the things that we had to build, the red, the green, the yellow, and it looked like that on one of these cards. And that would be a good example of something that would have to be done probably within 40 seconds. So um, I was able to do that easily enough, but I've played this game quite a few times, and I kind of know how to pick up the pieces depending on you know what position they need to be in. Um, and what I mean by that is let's say that we needed to do something like... Um, like putting this blue one here in like this. That could be something that we need to do. You know, over after playing quite a few times, you'll kind of learn like where to pick it up uh, and where not to, and that's not where I should pick it up. So I'll put that back down, and I'll grab it here. Okay, that gives me a little bit more of that um, V-like shape. Maybe I'll try to get it in like that. And then I will grab it here and pick it up. Nope, this isn't working. I literally have no idea what I'm doing. We'll come in like this, try to give it the old one, two. Nope, that didn't work. Like this. Come on now. Nope, that's not going to do it. So you can see, this isn't the easiest game. Even with these three simple pieces here, it's still a little difficult to be able to do it. Now, you can only imagine if it's this difficult to do with your hand, uh, how difficult it will be to do once it's strapped to your head. So let's say that we're moving along, and let's talk about how we can do that. So... Let's say that I was able to complete this one, and let's go back to our first example here. What that would do is every object that's in the right spot, you get one point for. So I would get one, two, three points, and let's say I was able to complete it within my 40 seconds. Let's say that was the time for this example. That would give me another four points. So whenever you're able to complete it within the time allotted, four points, plus one point for everything that's in the proper spot. So this would give me seven points. I would then take my pawn, let's say I was red, and I would move one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now, again, I did cross this little uh, red and white candy cane type striped area, which means upon my next turn, I would have to do a challenge. So I would challenge someone around the table. And how that would work, whoever was my challenger, we would remove the timer, so there would be no timer, we would flip a card and we would put it out, and we both would have to build whatever was on that card as fast as we possibly could. And we would go until one person was complete with their setup. And that's a great mechanic as well. It's a lot of fun because it removes the time. But, you know, you're, you, you kind of have a natural timer built in because the timer is the other person. You're trying to beat the other person. And that gets to be a lot of fun, especially when you're really close to getting it and you got like one last piece to try to get on and it falls off or you're both trying to get that last piece, especially if it's you're both using the, the head crane. So that's how that challenge mechanic works. So the last thing, let's give ourselves a challenge of the head crane. So I'm going to put the headband on and it does have Velcro in the back. You do want to make sure it is good and tight so the head crane does fit. Again, there is a, a slot here on the crane, and it just slides right in. And you can position that however you'd like, whatever uh, you know angle you want. I generally like to put it right out in front of me. Now we have our head crane. Bam. Bam. We're ready to roll. Let's say that we had to build this structure again. So let's go ahead and get our pieces back. Um, and I will get everything set, whoop, that's the wrong spot, get them set back, and let's say we're going to build it again, right? So it's yellow, green, and red. Let's see if we can do it. Ready? I'll give myself 40 seconds, and go. Oh, come on now. Okay, we're going to pick this one up like this. Oh, this is going to be tough. 
Oh, come on now. Come on. Oh! No! No! Let's do this. Come on. 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 Right there. Right there. Oh, this piece is so hard. And time's up. So you can see how hard that is. I couldn't even get this piece on top of this piece. Now, again, I have been able to do pretty good at this uh, during real gameplays, but you know, I kind of chose one on purpose that is, it appears to be simple and with the hand, it isn't too bad. Once you put this thing on, it's a whole nother level. That's Lifted by USAopoly. I definitely recommend this game. It's a lot of fun with kids. It's good for parties. I mean, I, we, we've got this out for multiple parties. We've had friends come over and hang out. Uh, it's a lot. It's, it's a lot of fun. So there it is. It comes with a high review. If you come across this, pick it up. You won't be sorry. So click that like. Hit the subscribe below to join the team. This has been the McGuire Review, and we'll see you next time.